Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are on Hub World. Today we bring you behind the scenes of our latest podcast. Yes, um, if you don't know, we have a podcast called The Running Hub Podcast. Subscribe. Uh, you can find us on Apple, Google, Spotify, and we'll leave links in the description below. But we are recording an episode today about the marathon taper, so we thought, why not record it for YouTube as well? So if anyone's just Googling marathon taper, it might pop up. Or if anyone just wants to look at us while they're listening. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, so if, you, if you're new to um, our channel, this is... James. James. Coach number one, Team James. And I'm Katie, coach number one. Two. <laughs> and we are both coaches of the Running Hub community. We coach... Multiple athletes from varying abilities, from 5k through to ultras, dabbling in triathlon, and a little bit of track season. Yeah, mainly road runners is uh, kind of our our speciality, I'd say. Um, and due to 2020, we moved everything online so again we'll leave some links in the description but yes if you're here if you've got a marathon upcoming we're going to talk about the taper what you should be doing what mistakes not to make and just what we've learned over the years yeah we've made all the mistakes don't make them yourself yeah we've made them so you don't have to hi james welcome to the podcast how are we doing this week welcome katie i am fantastic i am ready for the taper ready for the taper so that's what we're not here. quite yet there yet but yeah I'm ready for it so that's what we're here to talk about is the marathon taper some of this stuff will be applicable if you are training for a half marathon but because both james and i are currently marathon training we thought we'd do marathon focused yeah essentially tapers are race specific and are for all races or all major events or whatever you've been sort of peeking to so you could be a multi-sport person a cyclist a swimmer it's all about preparation for race day. In this case, there's a lot of major marathons and marathon season is definitely upon us in the running hub. So we're specifically talking about marathons. Yes, we've got a lot of people doing the London Marathon, which is on the 2nd of October. We have more people doing Amsterdam Marathon, which is October the 16th. I'd say it's around the same. And then we've got a few other marathons dotted in there, like Chicago, York. Chicago, York. Chester. Lisbon. Yes, there's a, there's a few... October basically is a busy month, so when you get to the start of September, that's when you start thinking about your... We're on the dregs of the COVID backlash, aren't we, with this uh, marathon season? I wouldn't say that, it's just the fact that it's a fall, a fall and autumn. Absolutely, it would. London is usually in April. Okay, yes. <laughs> All right. All right, I've got some questions. Um, Fire away. So, first question, is a marathon taper necessary? Quite simple answer. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> why would you not? <laughs> and we'll go, well, that was just when I looked at Google what questions were asked about Marathon Taper. Some people, and that, that will lead us into next, which is what is a taper? And essentially, this question will answer the first question. Well, to double end that and answer this question, what, by answering the first question, why would you train so hard and not give yourself the best opportunity on race day? Yes, exactly. And a taper, essentially, is the period before your race where you essentially will go into the intricacies but it's basically allowing you to rest recover get all the adaptations and be on that start line well rested and ready to go yes yeah, so you would have heard shape. us spoke speak sorry previously about letting your body absorb the training and get the training adaptions and that's essentially what's happened here as well as recovering and getting yourself ready for race day yeah that's it, isn't it? Getting yeah. ready for race day. Essentially, that's yeah, what, in a box. That's what the taper allows you to do. If we don't want to be uh, fancy and put anything, any bells on my site, yeah, get ready. But we can answer, we'll go on to next. So, next question, which comes up quite often, is how long is a taper? Essentially, two to four weeks, uh, depending on your ability, uh, your experience and strengths, I guess. And obviously the race, I mean, we're back again, we're talking about marathons. A half marathon might be five to ten days, a 5k might be three to seven days, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it. So for someone that might be doing a four-week taper, sometimes we work with people that are, maybe it's their first marathon. And as well, you might think about how long is it taking you to recover from those long runs. If you do your like longest run four weeks out from race day, 
does that give you the right amount of recovery? Some people that are a bit more experienced, we normally work off a three week taper. Yeah, absolutely. And the taper doesn't mean we're going to stop training. This will be the essentially the end of the peak. So looking at a four week taper, that might be the sign of your last long run. That doesn't mean your session and tempo work will necessarily stop, but your general load and I totally lost the word I'm looking for now. Load and volume intensity. Intensity will be down. There we go. Yeah. Um, I've worked off a four week taper before just because that's when our cal my calendars worked out. But like you say, it wasn't then in those four weeks I just stopped training. It just meant that things just came down. Sometimes gradually. clients or athletes on a four week taper may not know they're on a four week taper. Yes, very true. And a two week taper, I think that's for someone that's quite experienced. Yeah, I will probably be working off more like a two week taper, but my last big long run or long run session will be three weeks out. Now you're just confusing things, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Two to three week taper. Yeah, so, you know, long run wise, three weeks, but in that third week or week one of the three, my tempo and sessions will still pretty much be there. Mm -hmm. So what should a taper look like and what basically makes up a taper? Because we've spoken about what it is. It's basically getting you ready for race day and it's two to three weeks, but actually what does it really look like? So should, should we start with like your last? So essentially it's a fine balancing act of reducing volume and intensity, not letting the body get lazy. You need to keep it sharp. And also by moving and exercising, we're still promoting recovery whilst recovering and resting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so exactly that. So normally your last long run would be before you enter the taper. Um, and as well, some of, we like to sign off, it's like your last long run and it might have like some marathon pace stuff or it's just that final hurrah. Right. Oh, well done, said at the same time. To give you that confidence to know that, right, okay, well, I've had a really good long run here and I've got that confidence to take that into race day. So your last long run may be anything between sort of like 15 to 22, 23 miles. A lot of people in the marathon go up to 18 to 20. That's kind of like the average. You might have done a couple of those high teen distances. Um, but just don't worry about what other people do. Just... Yeah, it was absolutely individual to you. Yeah, it's really individual. So yeah, we'd start with that last... So let's talk on a three week taper just to give people an idea. So three weeks, you've done your 20 miler. The next weekend, normally sort of 14 to 16, maybe 13 to 16, depending on your experience. Yeah. And then the week before is 90 minute -ish. eight to 10 miles. So and let me just tell you now, this last long run the week before is always the run where you believe you're gonna go out, bounce along. It's over before you know it, it's a beautiful run. It's never that way. Absolutely never. I always, <laughs> I always hate that run. <laughs> I've had uh, both. I've had some that I've like bounced along and felt really good. But maybe I think that was when I was doing a four week taper. So maybe I was like a, a, a week ahead of myself in that in that respect. But yeah, like you say, it's kind of it can feel a bit clunky. It doesn't feel as smooth as what you'd open it because like you've been bringing your mileage down. So that's what the long runs look like. And then it, like James says, with your Tuesdays and Thursday sessions, or if you're doing intervals and tempos, they start to reduce slightly, maybe working more like marathon specific, half marathon, you're not like going on that top end speed. Then if you're easy runs, they might come down in time, um, distance slightly. And then we want to try and like ease off the extra activity. So the extra cross training, we want to start bringing that down. You know, if you're, you're used to an easy run of the week. Yeah. Because your aerobic engine should be there. Like if a Monday's a cross training day, then you might then just swap that for a rest day. And as well with your strength work, you want to start reducing that as well, because you don't want to be, we all know it's like, we've all done strength work. And then for two days afterwards, you can still kind of feel the effects on your runs. We're not looking for that anymore. You know, with strength training, you're breaking down the muscle fibers, they repair and they become stronger. We don't want to be breaking down those muscle fibers. We want to make sure that all of our muscles are ready and ready to go for race day absolutely no breaking down of anything um so we've spoken about taper what should race week look like well what it should look like and what it's gonna look like are two different things i guess <laughs> <laughs> why is that uh, so for me on race week you will have two schools of thoughts you'll have some that like to race race ignore that run the day before and those that don't i encourage a run before i think anything from sort of 20 to 30 minutes is perfect just to shake out a little nervous energy and to sort of wake your body up. 
working backwards, I would be looking at what Friday and Thursday being rest days. Wednesday would be a short run, once again 30 to 40 minutes, certainly no more than 50 minutes to an hour. Tuesday I would still be doing some sort of session, but when I say some sort of session, this might be four times a K at marathon pace with a couple of 200 kickers at the end just to sort of wake your body up and shake your body. Monday, depending on who you are and what your volume is, might be half an hour, might be a rest day. And as we said, the Sunday, you're looking at 80 to 90 minutes a week out. Yeah, that's typically like what a lot of people, that's yeah. roughly the format. But then, you know, if you're, this is your first marathon, then, you know, one or two runs in the week of the race is fine. You don't have to do this shakeout that we talk about the day yeah. before. If you know that you respond well off a, a couple of rest days, then yeah, take those rest days. Factor in if you're doing London, when you have to pick up the expo, you're going to be in your feet. It's quite, I wouldn't say emotional, but it's quite taxing from an emotional That's perspective. Tiring. Where's your arm? Yeah, and it's just, it's a lot because you're like, you've got all of these different emotions that are all kind of like rolled into one. You've got the excited feeling of picking up your number and being like wow this is so close and then you've got the anticipation of am I going to be able to do it and then the nerves and you know the I can't keep calling it an expert it's actually called the running show the running show is so grand and it's just so much they can drain you as well and we just want to keep everything in that race week really stress-free yeah. and it's really fundamental to remember in this last week or the last few weeks we say a lot to people you've heard the saying less is more at this point but what we like to say is this is the point where you just tick boxes don't over or underachieve mm -hmm. so for example on tuesday if it's k reps at marathon pace and your marathon pace is four minutes per k that's what it is that will feel easy that will feel like a nothing session but that's the idea that's uh, it's really difficult sometimes when we give people those those sessions and they're like oh i went fast on the I pace felt great i did 340s uh, no why are you doing that that's not the point the point is is that sometimes you actually want to dial into that pace you know what that pace feels like yeah, and the effort level is correct you know we're not not red zoning we're not taking the heart rate into anything mm. critical but if like if you are too used to being doing all your sessions too fast then what are you going to do on your race day you're going to go off too fast and you're going to pay the price for it later on been there, Down. Done that. Yeah, I'm sure, sure a lot of us have. Um, so yeah, essentially there's really not a lot going on on race week. Um, just keep things really easy, really relaxed. Just try to like reduce stress. Keep work quite like quiet if you can. Obviously, I know that you can't control that, but just just use the time to plan, work on your mindset, and just. Like James said earlier, you've spent a lot of time training for this event. You want to make sure that all your stars align and that you can give yourself the best position possible to have a good run. Yeah, we've said it a few times to clients recently. You know, Give yourself the opportunity to be the best version of yourself you can be on race day. You've committed to a marathon block. It's now time to eat, sleep, breathe, marathon. Mm -hmm. And just to confirm to our YouTube viewers who are watching, not listening, that was alcohol-free beer. I took a sip of. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a question that we have got in the past is that some people um, really people either love or hate the taper. It's like Marmite, isn't it? Some people embrace it. Some people just are unsure what to do. For me, I expect certainly from myself and what I'd like for my clients is you enjoy running. That's what it's all about. But at the end of your training and the start of taper, I want you to go, I'm done. I'm ready to taper now. And that's because you want to, not because you want to stop training, but you feel sufficiently knackered. <laughs> but also knowing you put everything in it and you're ready to bring it down now. Yeah, you're just ready to take the, the foot off the gas, really. So it, we might find that some of us have a bit more spare time. What could we be doing with a spare time to make it beneficial for race day? Absolutely nothing. Mm. feet up electrolytes in system yeah i think um watch a, a, youtube of your race get a, excited yeah apart from doing nothing i think it's very important to work on the logistics side of things we always like to say control the controllables so control everything you can so it might be that you start getting your kit ready finalizing what you're wearing making sure that it's you know the week of the race it's all washed and ready to go you're not still wearing it in the weeks leading up to it and the days leading up to it sorry so making sure your kit's ready, you know your transport routes, logistics, all that kind of stuff. Um, all those last minute bits that are surrounding the race before and after to make sure that that's not a stress on the day or the day before. Um, like James says, 
building the excitement by watching YouTube videos of, of your event is always a really good thing. Listening to back catalogue of running our podcasts, I find very interesting. Perfect. People. Yep, there we go. We've got a couple on things like race week and stuff, so have a check of the race week um, podcast. Can't reference the episode number, but it will be there. 41. <laughs> You're lying. Don't say, don't, don't go and look <laughs> don't up. Look for that. Don't look for Could it. Could you imagine what it actually is? It won't be. I'm sure it won't be. Um, that would have been like COVID time, so we would have not been talking about races at that point. Um, and yeah, like James says, just really, really relaxing. Don't think, oh, I've got all this spare time, so I'm going to do lots of extra walking and lots of extra cross-training or catching up with friends or filling your diary with all of this stuff or, you know, painting the spare bedroom because you've got time to finally do it. This is the first time, or the only bit in the calendar, where we're not even going to say to you, you've got some spare time, do some stretching, do some strength work. You don't need to do anything. Relax. Well, you do need to do a bit of stretching mobility. But knowing more than you need to, or yeah. have been doing. Yeah, and if cause that's the thing, like you don't want to be like, oh, I, I've i never stretched, and then in the week of the race, you're like, I'm foam rolled every single day. Probably not going to do yourself any no, any be benefits. <laughs> yeah, um, probably in race week, you might want a massage. Yeah, I'm a fan of a race week massage for me, about Thursday. Wednesday or Thursday, yeah. Give yourself a couple of days to recover from it. And but once again, if you don't poppy. normally have a massage before a race or a big session, then don't. Oh, I'd, mm, I'd say... Not if you don't normally, it's not something you do. I think you'd still benefit from it. Um, anything else for spare time? Reading, chilling out, just... If you've got any spare, spare time, if you can just send it my way, that'd be really appreciated. <laughs> that would be honest. lovely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so... I my a phone call with a client today who told me they had 12 hours sleep last night. It's not fair, is it? No. Uh, what time did we... Went to bed last night. Oh, I went to bed before you. Yes. Alarm was off at half six. Alarm went off at half yes. six. Yeah. Okay. So if mileage has dropped, should we be fueling the same? Yes. Uh, naturally, you'll be thinking mileage has dropped. I need to not fuel because I'm not doing the miles. However, your body is working overtime behind the scenes on repair and recovery. So, although you may not be fundamentally training, your body is still working, and also you're fueling yourself for race day. So. Obviously be mindful, don't just eat like a pig for a week, but you know, get the right stuff inside you and aid your body. You are a car, it needs petrol. Totally. And yeah, on race week, we've probably spoken about it before, with carb loading, don't just think, oh yeah, it's a big excuse to just stuff my face with loads of extra carbs I'm not used to. Think back to all the times that you've been preparing for your long runs. What have you been eating in like the hours leading up to it, the days leading up to it, and kind of replicate that. No, hopefully, I'm a hope huge believer in you don't need to do anything additional on race week because if you've been fueling yourself throughout the block, your diet's cracked. Yeah, and maybe you can be a bit more, uh, you can, f like, if you've got the time, you can be a bit more fine tuned, like, by making sure that you are drinking more water and you're using electrolyte tablets. I don't think anyone needs to, like, test out electrolyte tablets. No one you say try nothing new yeah. on race day. But it's just, yeah, maybe you could be getting. You don't need an extra jacket potato with your dinner. You don't um, need an extra bowl of pasta. No, I think people could be looking at their um, their like multivitamins. So like, I don't think there's anything wrong with by making sure that you're eating lots of nourishing foods or including a, a, like a multivitamin tablet. Because um, I think this might be a question later on, but um, your immunity can drop because you have like you've drained your body from the training. Not necessarily drained it, but you've pushed your body in the training, so it's going to feel a bit weaker and it's get your immunity is going to be once, bit... once again your body's working on recovery so your yeah. defenses are down in other areas so i think it just could be a time that you fine tune your nutrition rather than changing things it's about again all those extra one percent that we talk about what can be um what can we do and oh yeah sleep please, please. <laughs> um the night before the race it's likely that you're not going to have the best night's sleep scientifically the night before sleep unless you don't sleep it's kind of irrelevant it's the two nights before that yeah so let's talk about a sunday race day generally so it's about thursday and friday sleep they're the ones you need to be thinking about yeah so if your sleep yeah isn't optimum the night before it's going to be natural a lot of people get very nervous they can't sleep very well they're scared they're going to miss their alarm so they're like waking up every hour maybe Off topic of the taper you won't sleep well race day night either your legs will be so fidgety you'll be full of adrenaline don't say that because <laughs> i've had some okay night's oh, sleep I hate it. Yeah, right. Just speak for yourself, not for I everyone else. Um, so yeah, the next thing we actually it was we can lead into this is the marathon taper cold. It's um, 
all the niggles and the phantom pain so it's quite natural isn't it in the in the marathon taper for people to feel niggles to feel like they're coming down with a cold yeah i mean it's a combination of two things it is paranoia but also your body is going through a different process the training load is down the recovery load is high so your body is feeling different things and how you interpret that is peculiar it's strange it's not what you're used to for the last few weeks and that's where you start thinking oh does that hurt does this hurt chill out relax mm. <clears throat> yeah and james spoke about <clears throat> something there called maranoia so it's marathon paranoia essentially where you just worry over everything and your mind just goes into overdrive about not we. Yeah. yeah me more so um you know i think I can't remember what, <clears throat> I think it might have been 2019 and I think on the Thursday before the race like my shins were hurting and like I think I just swapped out my run for a bike that day and it was like what's going on? On race day no shin pain whatsoever but for some reason mind was just thinking oh there's something wrong so and you even had the little temper tantrum and about like oh, i can't miss a run and go for a bike that's not the same I'm like, okay you just go out on your bike you're annoying me now <laughs> i came out with you actually you went for a run and i yeah. biked next to you so don't say go out you're annoying me now but it is it is normal in those weeks leading up to it we can talk about like oh yeah like you've got loads of time and it's fine and you're in the taper and it's brilliant and reduction in mileage but there's all of those worries that you you've got and Obviously, there's a difference between a niggle and an actual injury, but if you've been fine in the weeks leading up to your to your taper, and then all of a sudden you've got pains in places that you've never hurt, then it's, it is going to sometimes be more likely to be phantom pains. If you're getting pains in areas which have aggravated, say for example, your hamstring's been really niggly the whole training block, and then in the few weeks leading up to the race, it's still hurting, then it's probably going to be your hamstring. However, and of course, avoid things like walking into doors and dropping stuff on your feet and stuff like that because that will hurt and that won't be in your head. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. If something actually happens, an accident, then yes, it's most likely that you've done something to it. It's not just a phantom pain. Um, so yes, it's just it's very common. Um, a marathon cold or um, these little phantom pains that you get, but it will be all right on the night. Yes, it will be. Well, hopefully, anyway. So, next question. Two more to go. Um, marathon tapering mistakes. What have we seen? What have we done? I felt really good, so I just did an extra mile. I felt really good, so I just pushed it a little bit faster. I felt really good, so I fancy doing an extra run. There we go. <laughs> Basically, yeah, doing doing more than what's what's required of you. Like James says earlier, don't underachieve, don't overachieve. And I think coming from a perspective where I've had questions in the past from people that are not coached by us or not in the running hub and have maybe not done all of the training that they'd hoped they would have done. And then what they tried to do is then, because the race is so close, they've found this new motivation, or there's the pressure of that race looming, that they go out and do lots of extra miles to try and make up for it. And they're like, oh, the week before, if I just do X amount of miles, then I should be all right. So it's just like, you still have to go through that same taper process, even if your training block has not gone in the way that yeah, you expected. Essentially, when the plug comes out, three, four weeks, two weeks, whatever it may be, you, what's done is done. You can't change that now, good, bad or ugly, so get the taper right. Yeah, we always say never try to chase a plan or never try to chase up, so I think that's a big mistake is just doing, is trying to cram stuff in and doing too much just because you feel good. Um, I, th I don't think like they can, like, if you don't do anything, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I don't think at any way that you're going to go from all this training and then do nothing anyway. No, you're in danger there as being a bit sluggish, but I don't think anyone's going to do that. No. So. Um, anything else? Any other mistakes we've seen people doing? Just doing too, like... There's anything with diet, like, oh, I, I tried this new food because so-and-so on YouTube said it's good, and now I'm constipated. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, that sort of stuff. I think it's just, yeah, just... Play it safe. Do everything that you've been doing in these weeks leading up to it. Don't try and change, don't change anything in your last final few weeks, because like you say... Someone else on YouTube has said that's good. I mean, to be fair, we're putting this out on YouTube. But, you know, 
we're telling you we made mistakes. Don't follow it. Yeah, and we're not saying you should be doing this or you should be doing that. It's just guidance listen, to follow. You've got to be a bit savvy. You've got to listen to your body. You've got to be a bit smart here. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, just don't try anything new in those last few weeks because you want to be experimental. Just follow what you've been doing. If it's been working, leading up to your long runs previously, then keep going. Follow and trust the process. Okay, and then last one, any marathon taper tips? Just get excited, believe in yourself. Whenever you think that you've not done enough or you're not going to be ready, have a little look back through your training diary, your Strava, and you'll be pretty impressed with yourself. You know, you, you've done a lot. Um, certainly don't compare yourself to anyone else, just look at yours and yours only. Um, I like to start thinking about the course, start visualising how you want to feel at certain parts. Um, London's a very simple one. How do you want to feel going over Tower Bridge? How do you want to feel at mile 22 when you go past the busy part of the course? You know, start thinking about those sort of things. How do you want to feel? Like I think for me, definitely, and I, I can't believe anyone wouldn't think like this, how do you want to feel your striding as you're going past the Thames, the big bends in front of you and you're bearing around to the right? I mean, that's an idyllic picture, isn't it? You want to be striding at your full length there. Hopefully, yeah. Want to be, <laughs> yeah. will be. Especially um, if you're running a hub trained with your perfect core physique holding your body <laughs> up right. Yeah, I think what you sort of spoke about there about the reflection piece, I think that's really important, is to sort of, because it's normal in that those last few weeks you could probably doubt it's going to set in. But if you look back to all of these amazing runs that you've done and also all of the runs where you've persevered on the day. Uh, yeah, I say definitely crap runs, definitely the windy, rainy ones or this season really the hot, hot ones, ones. <laughs> yeah because you've got you've gained a lot from that um yeah yeah no i think reflection is really really important because you kind of forget those times and marcella who is a running hub member before she did boston marathon earlier this year and she told us on one of our community calls that she had a little diary and every day she'd wrote something about her training no matter how small it was she wrote something positive about every day she'd said it was literally the tiniest of diaries but then when she was out in boston she was with friends but she wasn't with her family so it probably could have been a bit lonely but one day she just sat there and flicked through all of the the diary and it made her realize like wow i've actually done a lot and i've had some really great runs it just gives you that final boost really i think as well um everything that james has said was like really important but i think also as well just surround yourself with like good people because you are going to feel all of these different ranges of emotions and so you need people to be on your side when on the days that you're feeling great they can champion you and on the days that you're feeling a bit nervous or anxious they can be they can reassure you and say it will be fine don't worry yeah and then lastly um finalize your plan your race plan race strategy but do perfect not change it finalize it do not change when I say finalise it, let's use three hours, for example. We know that's 6.52 pace. We know that's going through halfway. But what's the contingency plan? What's the 5K splits? What's the 10K splits? Get that all in your head. What's the alternative if your watch fails? You know, Where do you need to be when? Mm -hmm. I think as well, before you define the race strategy, it's thinking about like what is success on the day? What do you want to try and achieve from this race? Because what you want from the race is going to be different. And also be really honest because people, including myself, will sandbag and say, I want to do X, when actually deep down you want something different. So just be really honest. Like, are you attributing success to a time? Are you attributing success to a feeling? Are you attributing success to just a finish line? You know, it could be different for everyone. So then your race strategy will be based around that. Like James just said, a three hour marathon, that's what success will be on the day. So make sure you know your splits, know where you need to be at what I time. I did not say that about myself. <laughs> Sorry, yes, you mentioned that. I use it as X figure. Okay. Um, but if you don't go in with a strategy, and even if that is strategy is to smile the whole way around and high five everyone and make sure that I... I am feeling strong at the end, that means your race strategy is, okay, understanding what pace is going to be comfortable to allow you to high five all the children and feel good at the end. So yeah, just knuckle that down. And then you need to have that nailed start of the weeks so that you're, like James says, you can then visualize how you're going to feel around the course, visualize how that's going to feel, know what that is. So that's embedded in you and you've got the confidence to go and execute it on the race day. So. Perfect. That's it in a nutshell. We're done. Wrapping it up. So yeah, do that. 
and we guarantee, asterisks don't guarantee, that you'll be ready for race day. Yeah, let us know, either comment if you're on YouTube or um, if you're listening to the podcast, send us a DM on Instagram and let us know what you're training for, when your taper starts and what you're looking forward to about the taper. Look forward to hearing from you all. Yeah, are you a taper fan or scared of the taper? Yeah, I'd lo- yeah, we should do a poll, shouldn't we? Like, yes or no. Do you love the taper? Do you embrace it? Or is it not for you? Anyway, James, sign us out. Right, over to the camera. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the podcast and we'll see you again. See you again soon.